My name is George Cardozo and I'm a lecturer at the Center for Medical Image Computing and I work on bringing machine learning and image modeling techniques into clinical practice. And something that I've noticed is that many of these techniques are currently using clinical trials where data that is acquired is very stable. But when it comes to translating them to clinical practice, the problem becomes much worse. And I would like to know Frederick's opinion on why that's the case. Hi, I'm Frederick Berkov. I'm a neuroradiologist and uh, working in a clinical setting trying to diagnose patients with, for example, Alzheimer's dementia. And in the past we used CT, which was a very poor image contrast, but it had meaningful values. Uh, today we use MR, which looks much prettier. You have good gray and white matter contrast, and you can see small structures like the hippocampus, which is important for memory. But uh, it's very difficult to uh, assess the amount of atrophy because uh, we need tools to measure the volumes, which is really difficult because the contrast varies significantly from scanner to scanner. So really the idea of this project is to learn the differences between scanners. We want to go back to the underlying MRI physics and being able to simulate images, and then we want to use the simulated images to predict small, subtle differences between MR scanners. And I would like to know now Ivana's opinion on why physics is an important topic in this PhD project. So hello, so my name is Ivana Drobniak and I'm a lecturer at the Center for Medical Image Computing. So small differences in scanner setting can create differences in contrast in MR images. These differences arise from differences in hardware setting, in shimming, in gradient system, and also at the reconstruction step. So we now have this very advanced MR simulator that given the brain geometry, the scanner properties and the sequence properties can predict a very realistic looking MR images. So we will then use these predictions that will tell us about subtle differences between different machines to be able to then teach computers, so using deep learning, using very advanced machine learning methods, to transform image acquired from machine A to an image acquired in machine B, meaning that the measurements will become more stable and that also means that the measurements will be able to be used in a clinical setting. And I think UCL is the, the best place for this project because I love this very close collaboration between engineering, computer science and, and brain sciences where we can translate uh, concepts and, and physics to applications where uh, patients will benefit from.